Hello, my Zentangle friends. Welcome to Not Perfect Zen. This is Barbara Langston, CZT, Certified Zentangle Teacher. And welcome to another day of the Inktober Tangles for 2021. Today is day 15, which is Ing by Zentangle. And I really like this pattern. So I think you're going to have fun with it. I'm going to use a Micron 01, my blending stump, and a graphite pencil. So let's take a look at what I practiced on. So I had fun with this one. If you go to the link that will be in the description and look at the examples given by Rick and Maria and Molly, on their newsletter when this came out. It's very interesting to look at the story. This was based on a structure that Molly saw, I believe, and she deconstructed the pattern. And it was an open outdoor type structure, similar to this. And um, I saw, I think in the Mosaic app, something similar to this and I thought, oh, how cute. And um, this one is that same basic pattern, but I used a fragment. This is similar to the pattern well, and put that into each of the sections similar to this. And then this one and this one I colored with watercolor brushes. And the nice thing, the fun thing about this is that um, if you have the Zentangle primer, and I'm trying to get it open. Okay, so if you have the Zentangle primer, there is a section on fragments, and there are fragments for triangles. So you could fill those triangles with any one of those patterns. So I'm going to show you how to do the basic pattern. I always have so much out of my desk. Sorry. Okay. So the basic pattern just starts with a zigzag line. And I'm going to do this kind of big so you can see it. And they don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be the same size. You're just going to go back and forth until you get to wherever you want to stop. Okay. And then the first step is you're going to go to each of these corners and bring that tip down to about halfway on the line below it. So we're going to go down. We're going to go to this one. And go down. And then go to this one. And go down. So each one of those went to about halfway on the line below it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Let's go to the other side. And we're going to do the same thing. Bring that line down. Go to this corner, bring that line down. Let's go here and bring that one down. If you wanted to pretend that this goes on past the edge of the paper, you could do that, but I'm gonna have mine stop here. Okay, so now that we've done each side like that, we're gonna flip this over and do the same thing. So I'm gonna go from this corner, bring it down, this corner, down, this corner, and down. Okay, let's do it again on this corner. This corner, 
in this corner. Okay, and so that's simply it. Um, zigzag line and then bring these down to match, to meet halfway on this line. And then on the one that I showed you here, all I did was put an aura inside each of these. And I would continue like that. If you wanted to use uh, a pattern like this, that's well. And all I did was put a circle and then curve that down to the corner. Curve that one down to the corner, keep turning. Curve that one down to the corner. Um, another favorite that I see quite often is another fragment. And we just put a curved line here on each side. Okay. And then put an orb inside here and then fill in this part. And you may see that quite often on the pattern Tripoli that people do this pattern. Okay. So there's a couple ideas. Put any kind of pattern inside of here that you'd like and just have fun with it. It's a, one of my favorite patterns. <clears throat> but I'm going to show you one that I saw on the newsletter in the link that you'll have for uh, how to do this. And that's a spiral. And it kind of fascinated me. So I'm going to try it. I'm going to start by putting a spiral down, kind of a string in pencil. And bring that around. That may be too big, but I'm going to start with it. And then I'm just going to begin here at this point and start adding zigzags. And my zigzags are going to be a little bit curved, and it doesn't matter which way they curve. But I'm going to bring them around. Keep going. Again, it doesn't matter how big they are. They don't have to be the exact same angle as you come around. This one kind of looks like, um, reminds me of shark fins. Excuse my dog. I think I have some neighbors outside. Okay, so I'm just going to keep coming around.
Sorry, I had to let the dog out. Okay, so there we have our basic line. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did on the basic one, like this. But I am going to curve them a little bit. So I'm going to bring that one. That one. And this one is going to have to come out curve a little bit and then okay I've already done that one I'm going to curve this one a little and that one curve it here there And I'm going to have to concentrate, so I may not talk very much, but it helps to just do one little corner at a time and go back and forth. Okay, so we've gone all the way around. That was our first direction. So now we're going to come back the opposite way. And we can tell by that one that's kind of left over. So I'm going to start at that end and start coming back. So curve, curve. Doing these with just slight curves. And the nice thing about having this on the video is you can back it up if you need to, to watch it again. And I tried this for the first time this morning. And um, was surprised that it wasn't that difficult to do. But it does take some concentration.
It's almost like doing paradox. You have to remember where you were at. But I think once you get those corners done, it's pretty obvious that I've already done those corners. I don't think I've mentioned lately that I don't speed up my videos. I leave that to you. There are settings within YouTube that allow you to speed up a video or slow it down. All right. I just think that's really, really cool. That until this morning, I had never done this. And um, like I said, it's not that difficult to do. So I am now going to erase that spiral that I drew as my string. You could um, do this, add color to it. Um, I think I'm just going to try adding a little bit of shading on, I don't know, maybe every other one of these. Not sure how that's going to work. Um, or maybe just the way I did it. <laughs> on the sample, a little bit in each corner, might do best. Okay, excuse me, I dropped my eraser. So I'm just gonna clean this corner out. And I'm just playing, what if? We add just a little bit of shading in each corner. Actually, I'm going to look at the one that I did earlier today. And I'm wondering what if we rounded these corners? How would that look? Yeah, maybe not. Okay, so I'm just going to add a little bit of shading at each corner. You could put a pattern in each one of these. I'm just going to soften that a little bit. I'm curious how this is going to look. It, it did fine on the straight one. Oh, I've got the sunlight peeking through. Okay. It's kind of a glare. I am really loving the weather. This is almost the end of September. I'm doing these early so that I have time to get them done in case I run out of time. Yeah, I kind of like that. You could even bring 
You're shading all the way in on each side, kind of like doing in Zeppel and leave it open in the center. So you're seeing real time how I play and do what if, what if I do this? Because with the graphite, I could always go back and erase it if I don't like it. Oh, I like it. Okay, let's do that. Let's just add a little bit of graphite in each of these corners like I did, and then we're going to pull it in more towards the center. On these small ones, I'm not going to put much because I do want to leave that highlight in the center. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so. Be careful to, to leave it white in the middle. If you happened to get too much in the middle, this is a kneaded eraser. And one of the things that's nice about it is as it gets dirty, you can just kind of knead it like kneading bread and it cleans it up a little bit. And you can move it to a point if you need to. And then let's say in this one, if I got too much in the center and I wanted to just pull up a little bit, I can do that very easily with the tip. Okay, I really like that eraser. And this may take a little bit, but I wanna see how it's gonna look. You're welcome to fast forward to the end or speed this up. Still had a little bit of that string left. So this is day 15. I am almost halfway through with my recordings. Like I said, this is actually, for me, September 25th. And I was trying to stay two weeks ahead, so I could catch up if there were days that I was not able to do a video. I do still babysit my granddaughters, but now it's mostly after school. So I do have more free time. On these bigger ones, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of graphite along the edge.
This was fun to learn, fun to try. It must be fun to be at Zentangle and your whole business is having fun coming up with new ideas. I really did enjoy getting to go to the CZT seminar. I went in July or June of uh, 2019. It was CZT Seminar 34, and it was the last live seminar before the pandemic. I started teaching at a local community college, and then six weeks into my classes, the pandemic hit, and that's how I ended up learning how to do YouTube videos and uh, teach on Zoom. It was scary in the beginning, and I don't know why. That's just me. I put it off for a long time. Finally did some Zoom classes with the students that I had from the college. But um, I needed a place to put my videos. And so I thought I'd try YouTube. And then last year, I thought I would try doing the Inktober Tangles, gave myself a challenge of doing each one in a video. And I think when I started, I had maybe 20 subscribers, my friends who had been following me. And since doing the Inktober Tangles, I'm almost to 2,000 subscribers, which just, which just blows my mind. And I'm grateful to have each one of you that watch on a regular basis. I appreciate it. I really like how this is looking. This is cool, this is fun. Have fun with your art, enjoy it. And don't be afraid to try new things. Like I've said many times, it's just paper and pen and pencil and an eraser. If you want to use it, go for it. My first, one of my first classes that I was a student, um, one of the ladies that I became good friends with always used an eraser and rulers and all kinds of things. And I thought, that's just not right because that's not how we were taught. But I had to accept the fact that that's what she enjoyed. She enjoyed making her art precise. And so uh, that's fine. If you want to use a ruler, if you want to use the circle maker, like I use sometimes, if you feel the need for an eraser, there are no Zentangle police. Just do your art the way you want to do it. Okay, almost done.
All right. Ing in a spiral. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew that I could do that? Not me until today. So trust yourself. Trust your skills. Just try it. More than anything, have fun with it. Have fun with this. I'm really happy to be doing the Inktober Tangles because like this, I've really learned something new. Um, gaining confidence in myself. Going to add my top B B L. There you go. All right. Again, that's um, the basics of how you can do ing day 15, the basic pattern, an open pattern with something going through it. You can do the basic pattern and put any other pattern inside of it. And you can even do it in a spiral. Thank you again for joining me on the Inktober Tangles. If you enjoyed this, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and join me again. I look forward to teaching you another pattern tomorrow. Thanks. Be safe. Be well. I'll see you next time. Bye.